what if I increase the concentration of Cu2 plus ions and increase it from 1 to 1.5, let's say 1.5. Now, Le Chatelier's principle say, states that when the change is made to a reaction in equilibrium, it will sh the equilibrium will shift so as to oppose the change. So, uh, the, the change made is the increase in concentration of Cu2 plus, so the equilibrium will shift such that the concentration is decreased again. So the equilibrium will shift to the right this time because Cu2 plus will have to be consumed. The concentration of Cu2 plus will have to be decreased because it has increased. So it would have to be decreased. So um, more Cu will be formed and this means that uh, the drive of Cu2 plus to form Cu has increased because the equilibrium has, has shifted to the right. And this means that uh, under non-standard conditions, which means when the concentration of Cu2 plus has increased, I will have a more positive E0 value because the the drive to the drive to form Cu has increased, the equilibrium has shift to the, shifted to the right, so I will have a more positive E0 value. So Le Chatelier's principle applies in this, and um, and if you haven't watched my play, play uh, if you if you're not aware of equilibria and Le Chatelier's principle, then you should watch my playlist on AS level equilibria. Now. This brings us to the general conclusion that if equilibrium shifts to the right, in e, e becomes more positive. So shifting to the right means E more positive. We cannot say E not anymore because the concentration is not in standard conditions. So E more positive and if the equilibrium shifts to, shifts to the left, then E is more negative. So this is the general conclusion we know. But you'll have to make sure that you're looking at equations where the electrons are on the left side because E0 is also known as standard reduction potential and therefore for reduction there always has to be a gain of electrons on the left side. So now we are done with this. Let's move forward. Predicting if a reaction occurs under non-standard conditions. So first we know that a reaction is feasible if E0 is greater than zero and not feasible if E0 is less than 0. Now if the E0, uh, so if the E if the E0 is less than plus 0 0.3, then under standard conditions the reaction will be feasible, but under non-standard conditions, which are conditions we have, uh, which, which are, which is when we have changed the the, 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 con the conditions, we, we have changed the concentration temperature or something under non-standard conditions if if E0 originally was less than 0, uh, 0 0.30 then the reaction will not be feasible under non-standard conditions. It is feasible under standard conditions because even if, if, if it is less than 0 0.30 it is still greater than 0. So under standard conditions it is still feasible. But under non-standard conditions, if E0, which was the original standard electrode potential, if it is less than 0 0.30, then it is not feasible. Then the reaction will not, fe uh, will not be feasible. So let's move forward. The Nernst equation. So the Nernst equation is basically calculating the E values under non-standard conditions. So it is given as E is equal to E0. E is equal to E0 plus RT over ZF, RT over ZF, where, sorry, I'll explain these sim symbols in a while, just give me a minute, RT over ZF, LN, oxidized form, Sorry, I wrote a wrong spelling of oxidized. I'll just correct it. Oxidized form. Over reduced form. Which means concentration of oxidized form over concentration of reduced form. So if the reduced form is a metal, is a solid or uh, is a solid so it will be 
uh, it will be taken as one. So it will just be RT, ZF, LN, ox 